Three um, minutes. Okay. The um, uh, collaborative programming offsite um, with the Watermarks Project, uh, focusing on um, uh, a Hispanic population uh, in Milwaukee from Acosta Middle School, I think was definitely worth noting and, and dealing with an emphasis on cultural sensitivity. Um, I think the um, uh, other unique partnership that I found um, uh, with Milwaukee Art Museum that was new was dealing with something that could be um, more of a, a national model and, and uh, have um, an international platform as well, dealing with um, incarceration um, and um, it demonstrated um, uh, just a, a unique uh, uh, discussion on civil discourse, I believe, and uh, something that could reach um, broader implications. The, um, there's a real rigorous planning effort that's, that's uh, visible um, for staff with regular reviews. Um, and uh, uh, the real visible progression toward their goals. So that's probably one of the key models um, for, uh, uh, you know, putting out there as a, a best practice. Um, it seems to basically take place with staff. So what I did wonder is where the input was for key stakeholders and um, uh, other, other program participants. Um, so I think um, that was certainly a strength. Um, but there, there wasn't a lot of visitor information, so I wondered what kind of feedback they had on their, their efforts and their programming besides um, their, their initiations with students. Um, but the project was a, um, a, an impressive way to try to connect with the community outside of that university setting and get them out, out and about. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Second reader. A, a, quick, a quick tease of uh, of someone who was uh, was writing in a slightly distracted time. Uh, their interactive virtual to, for uh, interactive virtual tours are described as being 365 degree tours. Uh, just teasing. Um, the let's see. They they are certainly uh, distressed at the prospect of further cuts from the parent organization. Uh, it's important to recognize that like um, uh, like the Watrous Gallery, uh, the Mar Marquette University uh, matches the income and expense each year uh, in its subsidy for the program. Um, they didn't describe the community under the community description section. They continued to describe their own activity, which gave me an indication that to some extent at least, uh, it's an inward looking operation. Um, and uh, that's uh, Jan's observation about about uh, the lack of visitor uh, feedback is uh, is another example of that, as is the fact that there are two major neighborhood related initiatives, the upward bound program and the bilingual initiative and the uh, the cultural sensitivity training all appear to be university um, initiated projects processes or projects rather than gallery initiated projects. And I just want to mention that the info from the focus group regarding galas might lead them into difficulty trying to satisfy both formal dinner and casual event groups by holding two events might erode the net funder raising revenue by incurring events for two events while not doubling your gross income. Also, the staff volunteer workload is doubled when you have two events and there's diminishing returns associated with that. Just a warning. Thank you, Jim. Lindsay, Adalia, Kate, I only have one other small thing to add, and that was just, I, I think that this is one of the only organizations that specifically mentioned that they revisit their strategic plan biannually instead of just annually. Um, so I thought that was a great practice. Is it biannual or semi-annual? They're, they're different. I, thought it, I read it as twice a year, every six months. So not. So you're year. saying twice a year would be good, uh, once every two years, maybe not so good. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I like the You liked what, Adalia? What? 
I just wanted to add that I liked how they mentioned that it was a, like a living document. Um, so meaning that they refer to it frequently. Thank you. Okay, yeah, were you talking about practice? Um, calling it a living document. And I just I like their planning process. I made a note that um, that part of that was the greatest strength. And in, in the narrative, um, and even though there are challenges with um, their their decision to go with two different fundraising events, um, using that information and how they're going to apply it was was nice. <laughs> it's good. Thank you. All right, thank you. If there's nothing else to add, let's uh, do the scoring. It should be in. I see them all. I think everyone is submitted. All righty. Now we're moving uh, into Door County again in Fish Creek uh, at the Peninsula School of Art. And Adalia, you lead. Yes, thank you. Um, let me just get my notes here. No worries. All right, so they are located in Fish Creek. Um, their mission statement is to provide enriching educational experiences to participants of all ages and abilities, um, broaden individual perspectives, foster a community dedicated to transformative power of visual arts. Uh, they're on a 10 acre campus. Um, they have pivoted to online learning, um, including their, you know, normal Door County Outdoor Festival. Um, and they really focus on telling the story of place, um, really focus on uh, reflecting on where you are, interpreting the landscape through a uh, unique lens. Um, some of the new initiatives they have is a mentorship program, um, specifically one-on-one -on -one coaching um, via Zoom. They've also managed to have socially distant gatherings. Um, they have family Friday projects. So kind of that curbside pickup with art kits and instructions. Um, and the weeks that they don't do that, they have, they provide activities that you can use supplies at home. Um, they also have a critique group for adult learners um, having conversations about um, their art and different you know, levels of where they're at and how sharing knowledge with each other. Um, they have online demonstrations and videos with artists, um, online auction, and they have lunchtime lectures. It's really um, a wide breadth of activities. We also mentioned they have their Door to Creativity capital campaign and that they're in their final phase. Um, so that they have groundbreaking slated for um, the fall. And um, they're really hoping that they can back with that space for some in-person student workshops um, for adults and children. Um, I liked how they mentioned that they utilize our social media. Um, they call it Back to Basics. So they have Workshop Wednesdays and they have um, some Family Fridays, like I mentioned previously. Um, and they've invested, obviously, in equipment to pivot to virtual. Um, Accessibility, I like that they mentioned that they have language interpreters and that they're really flexible um, with their facility times pre-COVID, allowing students with visual impairments, for example, to visit the facility early um, and get kind of an internal nap. Two minutes. Um, and I think one of the comments I wanted to say was that they could list in more detail um, how they would specifically achieve their um, donor object ob objectives. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, just to add to that, um, I <laughs> I noted that um, it didn't. It doesn't appear that they clearly listed. The, their typical year of events. I think they did a good job explaining how they pivoted, um, but it is nice to get the 
snapshot of what a regular year would look like, even if it's as simple as we did X amount of, we typically do X amount of classes or live music or, and I find that really helpful in general for all the organizations when they can kind of do a, like a, a simple breakdown, but then elaborate on it. But just to wrap your head around the scope of the organization right from the beginning is very helpful. Um, and I didn't really get that sense about what their typical year would be, but I did appreciate um, the information about how they have shifted during COVID and that, and their catalog is great too. So doing more digging, the information is there to see it, but it just having a clear listing would be helpful. Um, I, I thought that they, I, I, I know the organization a little bit. Um, and so I, I imagine they have more partnerships, but I thought that they could um, explain those a little bit more clearly. Um, and I wondered what role the board plays, so a little bit more information about how the board um, is involved in everything or not involved, maybe, I don't know. Um, I also agree about the social media shift and being intentional and then using that information now to as a, a tool to evaluate. I did not get a sense that they've really been reaching out to their local officials or what, and I didn't really get a great sense of what their community involvement in is other than the art kits that they're, um, that they put out. So more information on that, that they did a really good job explaining um, why they had surpluses um, because of their capital campaign. And that's it. Thank you. And, uh, and, and a belated Dahlia, I was thanking you and my my mic was muted. <laughs> I love it when that happens. Okay, additional voices, Carrie, Jim, Jan. I, I can't recall exactly where I was in the reviewing of the applications um, when I read this one. I'm sure I was about halfway through, um, but the comment that I wrote down, you know, because it all be kind of to be a lot after a while but the comment was um that the the application demonstrated a creative pandemic era programming that is refreshingly unique and so i was struck by what they have been able to do um since pivoting i think that was worthy of note with this application and i don't really have anything else like it would have been helpful when you're looking at um impact they did provide data that shows who's impacted they had a lot of numbers, but providing a baseline um, so you can compare those numbers over time is useful. So like what has been, is there an increase or not? Or is this what you've been doing for the last three years? Um, so I would recommend that. Thank you. Dan or Jim? Jan, you wanna go? Uh, the only thing I, I had noted was um, as they, they have um, um, uh, pivoted and, and uh, adjust their audiences during the pandemic. It seemed like, um, from what I could see, most of their um, outreach was still uh, dealing primarily with adult learners. And I was curious as to how they were um, introducing offerings to uh, a family audience or um, uh, other age group. Um, All right, thank you. I, I thought a couple of things of, about their uh, their financial plan uh, as as COVID hit. The fact that they furloughed staff while additional unemployment benefits were available, so that they could bring them back and keep them keep them on longer was was is noteworthy and and uh, uh, and praiseworthy. Um, that they provided continuing benefits to all the staff, even those who were furloughed. Uh, I also want to thank them for giving a very clear explanation of their financial responses to the COVID issues. And I too thought it was a very clever social media plan. Um, I thought I had another comment here. Let me see if I can find it. Perhaps not. Thank you. Okay, I think. Just to make sure I heard that correctly. Uh, did you say a clever use of social media? Yes, their 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 social media plan with a different staff member uh, uh, talking about a different thing on each day of the week was uh, was yeah, clever. Got it. Thank you. All right. Well, if that is uh, 
that's the conversation, then please score. See them all. All righty. Uh, moving a bit south into the Oshkosh area, Oshkosh actually, uh, the Payne Art Center and Garden. Okay. All right. And Jan, um, this one's yours to lead. Okay. Uh, in organizations that, that's been around uh, for some time, um, uh, dealing with um, a historic estate and um, um, revival sort of Tudor mansion that uh, uh, was built by the the named um, uh, uh, the, the Paines and uh, on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, mansion never really lived in, so um, it's maintained uh, uh, its art purposes and. Um, uh, uh, has been converted to um, you know, gallery use and um, um, uh, showcase for decorative arts and and uh, um, a small collection, 1,500 objects of fine art uh, works, and thus use that as their um, sort of point of departure for some of their exhibition planning um, and change exhibitions. Uh, so they um, have. Of about had a staff of about 50 pre-COVID, uh, and um, like many others, ended up having to reduce staff. But one one thing to their credit, ha they have um, had a pretty consistent staff and, and stable staff over time. So um, that uh, has been maintained. Um, from an artistic program uh, area. Uh, I thought their, their core studio program was probably one that uh, offered some valuable collaborations and provided depth and, and uh, continuing uh, learning and engagement. Um, their exhibits uh, tended to vary from what they put forth in, in quality and depth. And um, I would have liked to have seen maybe um, a little bit more insight as to the, the choices and selection process. Um, so how that compared to their mission um, there was one exhibit of, uh, that was noted that looked like um, an effort to dip into aspects of diversity and inclusion called the Brave Color Photo Project, um, offering also an ability to tour and get out into the community. And then one more um, touch point on diversity with the, um, uh, um, you know, the neat uh, Tibetan mandala project that lasted as a, uh, an activation piece over the, the course of a week with an activity. Oh, that's... Um, exhibition stayed on. Um, but I would have liked to have learned more about the uh, impact of the, the color photo project. Um, and uh, it didn't seem to have um, that information captured. Uh, other uh, Tiffany and, and Maker and Muse exhibitions that were put forth uh, leaning toward their decor decorative arts um, background and history. Um, and again, I would have liked to see, other than that, um, more evidence of community input on how these tie into their, their role, outreach, and planning. Um, there is some, uh, a nice structure to their educational program that ties to the DPI standards. Uh, and uh, I think that's worth noting. Um, but, a, but I think um, from an adult interpretation standpoint, other than um, uh, curatorial talks for the exhibitions and introductions. Um, and would, it would be helpful to learn what other uh, visitor uh, opportunities there are to, to engage. Um, they've, they've certainly diversified their income streams um, and um, um, have been uh, trying to support the historic home, the gardens, as well as the, um, their collection and uh, certainly an asset that their key staff have remained in place. 
um, uh, in planning, long-term planning, again, uh, evidence of community input, uh, I think uh, would have been uh, best for them. Um, and understanding how uh, in dealing with the pandemic, they have um, uh, worked to navigate the pandemic with um, alternative programming a little bit uh, more strongly mentioned. Um, uh, there's sufficient opportunity, I think, for, for input to planning uh, through various um, survey and evaluation tools, but um, um, learning how the planning is integrated with staff and, and board input and involvement altogether uh, would have been helpful to know how they had they define their future goals. Um, and then the action steps from uh, 2019 to 24, um, I think, could have been more defined, more clearly defined. Um, I didn't see much of a marketing plan other than um, their their marketing use for Maker and Muse uh, was the example that was given. And I <clears throat> think overall understanding how they're um, reaching out to increasing their audience and expanding their membership base would have been helpful through their marketing. Um, I think that's it. More more defined strategic plan, stronger evidence of um, alternative programming uh, due to the pandemic. <clears throat> OK, thank you, Jen. Yeah, Alrighty. Jim. Uh, I think their arts core teacher teacher training initiative is worthy of, uh, mm -hmm. of kudos. I have a, I have several comments on their financial plan. Um, one is that uh, they did a very nice job of explaining the endowment income, but much better than than anybody else. Eight million dollars times four percent times four point five percent equals fifteen percent of their budget. That that tells me something. Uh, and gives me a, a way of evaluating uh, their their other financials. However, the other uh, items that they gave uh, that they showed us uh, in terms of their their diversified income activity plus that that 15 percent of the budget adds up to 86 uh, percent. If you're going to tell us that much, what's the other 14 uh, percent? I, I inquiring minds want to know. Um, and also, uh, it, it's clear from their financials that they don't fund depreciation. That is, they don't consider any deficit that is is less than the cost of the depreciation of their considerable assets uh, is really a loss. Now, a lot of organizations do that. Uh, we used to do that at the Grand Theater when I managed it, uh, because when a not-for-profit organization needs to rebuild something, they fundraise for it. it. It becomes a capital project. But it, it's helpful if an organization makes that explicit. And that's a general comment for the whole group. When I think a number of these organizations did not fund depreciation, and that's why their uh, their budget numbers were somewhat incomprehensible, where they would say, we don't run a deficit when clearly expenses exceeded revenue on a regular basis. I believe that has to do with funding depreciation, and there should be some kind of a note made of it uh, when you do that. Um, I'm making a note, and maybe we can talk about this at the end of the day as well, let's, but right. I would love some wording that might be helpful guidance um, yeah, to I applicants. Have, awesome, I, I have, of course you do. Of course you do. Thank you. On that. Okay. okay. Uh, so with, with regard to something that Jan said, they have a wonderful array of evaluation tools for those who participate, but I don't see them uh, making an effort to reach past their current participants to those who do not participate to learn more about them so that they could expand effectively. Two minutes left. Thank you. All right. Uh, Adalia, Carrie, Lindsay, thoughts? I don't really have anything to add, just to comment that um, their their link to their brochure, if they could, in, if if applicants could include direct links to things, this I think this just went to them their main website homepage. Um, it'd be a little bit easier to find. 
I don't have anything to add. I don't either. I think okay. the discussion already covered it. Great. Thank you. All righty, then please score and uh, let me know when they're in, Dale. Great, then we are going to go even further south into uh, Racine and the Racine Art Museum. Uh, Lindsay, you lead this one. All right. Um, the mission of the Racine Arts Museum is to exhibit, collect, preserve, and educate in the contemporary visual arts. They do approximately 12 to 15 exhibits each year. And they claimed themselves to be, and I'm sure they are, the largest contemporary craft museum collection in the US. That's a big deal. Um, 30 classes per semester. They have free admission days. They offer study guides, student tours. Um, one program that really stuck out to me um, that I am impressed by is their Ram on the Road that they started in 2011 to bring the arts to the schools directly in an effort to try to remove some barriers of bringing kids into their facility. So it sounds like that program has been very successful. They also are part of the SPARK program, which I've seen um, from several organizations now, which is wonderful. Um, an extremely low turnover for staff, uh, including their executive director, who is celebrating 47 years, which is impressive, and also probably to uh, the quality of and efficiency of the work that they're doing. Um, I thought their budget was well explained. I'm excited to hear what Jim <laughs> might say about it later. Um, I, they have a very prestigious list of board members. Um, because they have high levels of poverty in that area, they offer free hands-on exhibits. Um, so I think that is important work. They listed their economic impact as 5.6 million. So um, great work for that community. Since 2006, they have increased their minority attendance from eight to fifth from eight percent to 50.2 percent, which is amazing. And so that should be commended. Um, and the staff is involved in the community and often sought as jurors, presenters, um, etc. And um, I went again back to the RAM program. I they saw they saw that there was an underserved audience. They saw the need and they reacted to it, and it has been successful. So I think that is um, worth mentioning many times. They they did mention some of the partnerships partnerships with the schools and the senior living and probably they can only say so much but because they're doing all of these things I would imagine there are other business uh, or other organizations that they also are working with so I wanted to know more about that and I didn't notice the marketing plan I noticed a marketing budget and so maybe that's what they're using as their marketing plan um, but I guess a little bit more information on that uh, would have been helpful. Thank you, Lindsay. Dan. Okay. Um, so this is an organization that um, uses its collections and edu um, educational initiatives to offer some impressive outreach programs, I think, for uh, the community, uh, particularly in engaging underserved audiences at, at no cost. Um, I think uh, um, their, their work with the K-12 school system um, to seniors and outreach programming um, for site programming as well as um, on-site programming and, and the outreach programming is impressive um, and they've adapted well. Um, they um, uh, have to raise a good portion of their operating funds um, and uh, um, in past years that seems to have um, certainly uh, uh, resulted in some deficits. I'm, I'm, Worried with uh, the trying to balance uh, the outreach to underserved communities and and dealing with the pandemic of how this is going to affect them uh, this year because they've certainly done a, a, a great job of trying to uh, reach out to the community um, and serve people at um, in that low income area. Um, they they have developed some good strategic partnerships it seems in the community 
um, that are uh, certainly beneficial. Um, not sure how those will play out economically down the road, um, but their access to programs certainly seems to have tried uh, very much to uh, break down cost barriers uh, in, in transportation obstacles, obstacles as well um, uh, in, in terms of getting people to the, the institution. Um, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more um, in terms of examples of evaluation of their programming and um, strategic planning um, uh, and for input for strategic planning. And then in, um, things to have added to the proposal, maybe a programming calendar and ex exhibition examples would have been helpful uh, to review as well as possibly an annual report or some other uh, visual materials. Um, I think certainly the, the, there's strength in the organization and its rigorous planning and its commitment to serving the arts um, and, its, and its outreach programs, particularly for um, an underserved community. And, and um, it's an organization that has uh, grown over time and, and certainly become a valuable asset due to the growth of not only its uh, local programming, but um, building up its collections for, for national use and, and recognition. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Jim. All right. So Carrie or Jim or Adalia, anything to add to the mix? No, not really. OK, that's fine. I just thought that for marketing um, timelines, you know, schedules, or like discussing the various platforms for incorporating their content um, would have strengthened it. Thank you. I indicated, or I, I did look at the financials. I found them clear. Uh, it was it was clear to me that their endowment income does cover their deficits, uh, and that's that's worthwhile. Uh, they did make a comment, however, in the um, in in the how do you know section that uh, their auditors uh, do some benchmarking with other significant. Uh, museums around the country because there probably aren't very many that that are comparables within within Wisconsin for the kind of the kind of scale that they that they do especially for craft work uh, and I went looking in the audit report for those benchmarks and I didn't find them so it would be interesting to know if you're going to uh, if you're going to mention something like that uh, don't tease me uh, <laughs> I, I would love to see the information about what what the the benchmarking by the auditors for uh, typical proportions of of revenue and expense uh, uh, might have told them and how they use that information. Thank you. All right. Any other comments good to the cause before we uh, score them? If not, please go ahead and score. I see them all. All right. And then Jen, I noted your uh, perception of conflict or conflict of with this one. So we'll repeat the process of last time. We'll recuse you. Thank you. And um, then we, I will email you when it's good to jump back in. Great. Thank you. That didn't seem to work. Let's see. Awesome. That worked. All righty. We are uh, in West Bend uh, at the Museum of Wisconsin Art. And Carrie, you are kicking it off. I am kicking it off. OK, so the um, Museum of Wisconsin Art celebrates the value and uniqueness of the visual arts and artists of Wisconsin. 
it has been uh, active in West Bend for almost 60 years. Um, and it opened a, a new cultural center for the state in 2013, so just a few years ago. It has, uh, like a large art museum should, um, uh, extensive um, exhibit schedule and active educational programming. Let me switch to my notes here. Um, a great breadth in its art programming, and it does show that it has uh, really looked into new initiatives uh, since 2019, um, just over the last year. So since October of 2019, it's launched an annual exhibition of video art projected on the building exterior, and I think that's innovative, and I was interesting to see and hear about. I guess I didn't see it, but <laughs> to hear, to read. And also last year, um, they began programming um, in uh, St. Kate, the Arts Hotel, located in the heart of Milwaukee's cultural district, district uh, something else that's new. And they um, launched a fellowship with two positions for graduate students of color. The other really notable thing about um, artistic, educational, and cultural value of, of the organization and the application is that there's a real commitment to artists and then they're very clear um, in the application that they, they're here to champion art artists. And so um, one of the example would be uh, part of their fundraiser, 50% of the artwork sold um, was given back to the artist. I think that's important to note. Um, like other organizations, they've also been involved in Spark Alliance. Um, and their work samples, and I always really like to go looking at their work samples to really get a, a visual sense of where an organization is at. Um, they Two do, minutes. they did provide a nice um, collection of, of images that look at the programming pre-pandemic. Um, so what they have been doing up until the spring. It would have been good because they have been programming since the spring a lot. And it would be good to have also included that within their work sample as well, at least the visual part. That said, the other parts of the application and their support materials do indicate all the other things they've been doing. Um, I guess visually, I would have liked this in the, in the work sample. Um, as far as other notes, They uh, have a, a long reach, um, and what I would have liked to have seen in the community participation and accessibility section, most a little bit more follow up to their everyone's a member of policy, which I think is an interesting concept, um, and seeing what kind of impact that has made um, implementation. Is it how has the number changed or not changed um, with that policy? And then for the final section, planning, evaluation, and documentation, the planning procedures are clearly described, and they do use a variety of evaluation tools. Um, and looking at including community and educator service surveys to help inform the decision making, the strategic plan would be um, a little bit more useful if they have clear markers um, and action steps in the years of the plan so they can kind of track their whether they're achieving their goals. And I turn it over to the, the secondary reader. Or Great, thank center. you, Adalia. Yeah, um, I appreciated their emphasis on the reciprocal influence of art in place um, and how uh, place shapes the art that was created there and vice versa. Um, also reiterating it's wonderful that they are focused on compensating all of their artists, um, always reflecting back to their mission and values. Um, I see, I saw that they noted um, that their website doesn't reflect their, you know, excitement for their programming and they, you know, mentioned renovations in 2021. So um, I hope that happens. Um, and they had significant corporate partnerships, um, really focused on making the community a destination, you know, a gathering space, um, 
really helped in increasing tourism. And they also have that community discount program. So discounts throughout the town, um, partnering with local businesses like food, drink, and shopping. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, a few things. Um, first of all, I thought that the, uh, the juxtaposition, and I'm sure it's intentional, uh, of their effort to create satellite facilities, of which St. Kate Hotel is the first, uh, in other areas of the state, is in some ways a reflection of and in other ways an attempt to uh, increase the fact that 80% of their members come from outside West Bend. Uh, so they are, they are obviously making concerted efforts to become, uh, to become, to have their reach equal their name, essentially, uh, Museum of Wisconsin Artists. Uh, I like the, uh, the way in which they talked about the barriers that they are trying to eliminate to participation, practical, perceptual, and experiential. Um, and let's see, their capital projects and art purchases, this is for about finances right now, uh, their capital projects and art purchases varied, and it was and, and to to an extent that made it really difficult to figure out whether their operating uh, budgets were actually balanced or not. Um, I, I kept looking for a document that would help me sort that out, and I wasn't quite able to find it. Not that's not to say their finances aren't clear. I just wasn't quite able to find that process. Um, this is a comment and not a judgment in any way. Uh, the endowment of this organization is not nearly as large as those of many peer institutions. Uh, and that reflects the con their concentration on capital projects and art acquisition as the, as the organization evolved uh, in its recent history. Um, they, they need to pay attention to that, uh, so that so that they can continue to flourish uh, in the ways that they are flourishing now. Thank you, Jim. Remembering to unmute this time. Um, yeah, other voices. <laughs> um, the only thing I'll add to it, just kind of a, a general comment about this grant application as a whole, is looking at the narrative and the, the sub questions that they were given. I thought that they did a really good job trying to like hit each bullet point and ex really share the work that they are doing. I thought that they did a really good job. It was very clear. Um, and impressive of uh, the things that they're doing. Uh, and, the, and then the only other like little thing that I think hasn't been mentioned already was, um, as far as their outreach goes, the fact that they have an um, exhibition at the governor's residence is talk about uh, communicating with your local leaders. So they're up, up close and personal. So that's great to see. Thank you. Adalia, anything to add to the mix? Oh, sorry, not Adalia. <laughs> Uh, everybody's talked. Fantastic. I'm missing Jan. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Please go ahead and score and I will let her know she can join us shortly. There all four are here. Great. Alrighty, email sent. I expect we'll see her soon. And there she is. Welcome back, Jen. Thank you. Yes. All right. You have joined us in time to be the, the primary on uh, the Woodson Art Museum in Wausau. Okay, okay. Um, well, the, the Woodson has uh, had a, a long, wonderful history um, and uh, um, uh, seen it uh, uh, grow and change over time um, to right now offering, or at least not during pandemic uh, times, about 10 exhibitions a year um, and uh, four uh, resident, at least four residencies, if not more, that accompany some of those uh, exhibitions. So um, uh, they 
uh, draw their exhibitions from a variety of sources that also include the museum collection and uh, uh, accompany that with uh, programming that's focused on delivering five key mission related areas from diversity to artistic technique. Um, Birth and Art remains one of their reliable antici and anticipated exhibitions where they've received um, international acclaim and recognition for that. So um, during some of these, engaging the artist residencies has broadened their, their scope um, to deliver uh, some kind of a community connection and creative process connection for their audiences. Um, their education programs have really been a strength and have um, grown uh, much over time to be very inclusive of both age and ability. Um, marked by uh, collaboration with uh, 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 programs such as um, the, the program uh, called SPARK for those with um, memory loss, uh, but also starting very in very young uh, ages, I'll, I'll mention a little bit later. So they've um, experienced some transition with retirements, but it looks like they've endured that fine and, and uh, have planned for that. Um, They've provided the continuity for their audiences through incorporation of um, both the rental exhibitions um, uh, using the Dre House as a, a source and international arts and artists um, uh, to provide some uh, flexibility to their their um, program levels. Two minutes. They, okay. Um, They've created financial stability over time as and been a sustainable organization with a really strong endowment um, and a well-managed financial position. Um, and I'm sure the pandemic has created obstacles for them, but um, it doesn't look like they're ne they're not necessarily reliant on revenue streams from programs or or lost admissions during that time. Um, appear to be good uh, structured supportive partnerships within the community from their board and um, um, assisting in maintaining programs. The, um, I think some of the most uh, striking aspects are their accessible education programs and their ability to connect art to healing uh, with one of their newer uh, programs uh, dealing with hospice and bereavement um, and, and certainly something that uh, I think it's worth noting and, and looking at as, um, as some of their other educational programs as a model of resource. Aren't beyond, <clears throat> aren't beyond sight uh, is enhancing the observational skills of medical students. Um, so that's um, another new cultivated audience to bring into um, the importance of art in everyday uh, education. And then they've introduced new audiences through um, probably even their, their um, uh, the foundation that's sponsoring them, which is the Green Bay Packer Foundation, which I saw kind of interesting. Um, so I, I would assume that uh, that might bring some curiosity seekers down um, uh, away from football, perhaps. Um, looking through their strategic plan, I, I, I um, did not see a lot of in, input um, in terms of the planning direction. I was looking for maybe a little bit more information on how the community is engaged in, in the programmatic decisions uh, and how um, the museum addresses audience needs outside of the educational delivery. Um, there certainly is longevity to the programs as a strength and uh, um, excellence in their, their uh, um, uh, education programs and also just the, the quality of print and um, uh, social media materials that they put out. Um, I would have liked, so overall comments, um, maybe a little bit more um, focus um, on input from the community, maybe use of focus groups, um, feedback, which they might be doing, but that wasn't mentioned. And then um, additional information on changes in delivery programs during the pandemic. But certainly to point out one of their most stellar aspects is the inclusiveness of their, their programming for accessibility and um, the programs directed toward visual impairments um, and hospice that um, are, are tapping kind of an un, untapped resource for the communities. So that's it. Thank you, Jan. Carrie. 
Well, I would say that Jan's summary comments at the end really were, were the crux of my main comments um, as well. The only things I would really add, and I think it's worthy of note um, when it comes to the organizational financial management section and just overall, is that the organization has um, a broad base of support within the Wausau area community, community and they noted that they have 900 household memberships. That community isn't particularly large, so I think that it, it, that number may seem small in comparison to other areas of the state, but I think it's important for that area of the state. It's significant. Um, so I'd like to see that. And um, I want to reiterate what Jan was saying. It would be helpful to know, and I think it would be important to show in the application of the adjustments that have been made since um, the pandemic began when it comes to programming particularly with youth, they do have a really strong youth um, educational component. So how have they really navigated that in the last, I guess it would have been six months when the application was due. All right, thank you. Other voices in the mix. I don't have anything to add. Go ahead. Okay, I want to mention the uh, the one of one of the hallmarks of their programming is the thematically related concurrent exhibitions, which which makes a visit to the uh, to the uh, museum uh, feel like a like a holistic experience rather mm -hmm. than moving moving from one thing into something completely different they they do that uh on a regular basis um uh, also the fact that they they were very clear about the impact of covid but there was no whining thank you very much um all once again uh, uh another best practice uh, i meant to call out it, call it out when i mentioned it before with the other organization which i can't recall now uh they were very clear about the use of their endowment funds. Their endowment covers 57% of their operations. Thank you. Very helpful in evaluating the stability of an organization. Um, that's it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Adalia, did you have something to add to? No, I think the discussion covered it. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, then please go ahead and score. And I just realized that um, your names don't necessarily tell the um, observers who you are and and uh, maybe what you're doing these days if you're with an organization, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat, but I will encourage the panelists to ignore the chat and continue with your scoring. And uh, and we have one more application in this category to uh, to review when you're all in. All right, I see them all. All right. OK, then uh, then Jan, please uh, lead the conversation uh, on the Milwaukee Art Museum. OK, um, let me just navigate my my desktop uh, a moment here. I had a an interruption. Thank you, I'm sorry. Um, well, let's see, let me just, um, <clears throat> I know it's probably a little bit more brief on, on this, this particular one, um, uh, but uh, certainly not to slight the organization. Uh, 15 major exhibitions in, in a year, large, large um, standing organization that has, um, uh, changed and grown massively over time, over its history, um, adding on physically, but also um, uh, redirecting programming um, multiple times throughout its history. Um, and uh, noted once again in, in this uh, proposal that it's um, uh, 
uh, redirecting his programming again, um, a, a little bit more so and, and being reflective of the community and, and honoring uh, its um, uh, Milwaukee base. So, um, um, major exhibitions um, and gallery changes with about 85 programs uh, throughout the year, offering both a, a national but also local exhibition perspective. Um, and they're working to address some um, that in their newly defined mission. So um, their scope has partnered with at risk and underserved populations, LGBT communities, um, as well as um, dealing in the broader scope of, of the arts and contemporary design um, and um, um, arts uh, as, as a reflection of the academy. They've been working um, to serve student needs, I, I think, uh, much more focusedly, um, uh, youth needs increasing that and creating a broader access for um, uh, more expansive age groups um, as they've grown. So they've been um, really making a concerted effort to use their programming to reach marginalized audience, I believe. Um, they've um, worked well at demonstrating their ability to uh, leverage the community relationships and garner support uh, along the way uh, to produce some quality programming and mission related events. Uh, they have they've had a, a strong effective uh, professional st staff that's guided uh, um, a seasoned board as, uh, as well as the leadership and the uh, community appears um, uh, engaged and supportive um, uh, to assist the museum in, in some valuable partnerships along the way. Um, they've minutes. taken a significant, significant turn in their um, uh, outreach to the community and, and ability to connect um, with art um, through a very different lens. And so the work has evolved to be much more inclusive and relevant to a broad and more culturally diverse audience, I believe. Um, and inviting input, um, strong input into their planning sessions and selection process, um, soliciting feedback for exhibitions and, and programming. I thought an interesting take on that was um, the staging of the Bougereau exhibition and how it offered um, area teens to engage um, with the exhibition and community members suggesting theme, relevant themes or themes of how the exhibition would play out in a contemporary sense. Um, um, uh, and inform audiences with current societal trends. Um, there was um, I think a, uh, one program that really stood out also in terms of uh, maybe creating a national leadership model, and that was the uh, role of the arts in the criminal justice system and um, this newly explored um, area. So... Hmm. Planning and outside um, input appear to have um, major roles for ensuring their program um, and exhibitions are reflective of their community and their, um, their mission. Uh, their key stakeholders are, um, are not necessarily defined, but um, in some specific instances, community audiences are included in the voice of their planning. Uh, there are post evaluations that seem to take place um, and multi-dimensional planning teams that assess the um, input um, um, from a variety of sources to um, enable them to, to do some long range focus. Um, I think input from their existing program seems to form a cornerstone in, in shaping and, and restructuring the programming. And uh, they have a community task force. They've designed a, uh, community task force for 2020, giving them a more forward vision. So I, I thought that was um, uh, noteworthy. Um, strengthening the proposal, more information on how COVID impacted the institution and future programming. Um, the addition of video tours, I think was um, of masters was a, a real plus and showed a nimble response to um, virtual program delivery. And then um, uh, from a, just a personal preference standpoint, um, I would have liked to have seen um, maybe more visitor um, solicitation of visitor input um, to some of their, a uh, reflection of visitor input on some of their programming. But overall expanding, I think the family educational programs um, and developing more out outreach, particularly for early childhood learning, 
as the 21st century model, which is another key uh, learning initiative for um, uh, this century and how arts impact um, everyday life, I think is uh, really uh, stellar and, and worth noting. Um, and then the ability to um, leverage community issues and collaborate uh, with other aspects of the community, particularly noting again that arts and criminal justice initiative uh, is um, an interesting focal point. So that's it for me right now. Thank you, Jan. Jim. I want to echo what, what Jan said and uh, make a few other notes. First of all, with regard to the outreach to the adjacent neighborhoods, uh, Often when I'm reading about things like that, about initiatives like that, they can feel perfunctory. This feels real. The, de mm -hmm. the amount of detail that they, uh, that they uh, put into it, the, clearly the amount of planning that they put into it, the amount of resources that they have, have dedicated to it. This feels like a real uh, outreach initiative uh, to become more relevant to its, the immediate surrounding community. Um, uh, very praiseworthy. Um, I, here's, here's another one of my, uh, of my financial, uh, issues with regard to their budget note on the form. Um, they, they, they gave, they worked very hard to give an explanation, but it became paragraph math. Paragraph math is very difficult to follow sometimes. <laughs> Uh, it would have been helpful if they had simply done done a column of figures starting with their most recent audited financial totals and shown the adjustments that they made to go to get to the summary figures. Um, that would have made it uh, made it simpler to follow, and I think a little bit easier to do uh, uh, for the person who did uh, who had to write those those explanatory paragraphs. Um, I'm just looking quickly through my other issues. Um, what a great, uh, what a great for a new, uh, for a new person, the director of community dialogue. Um, gamers foundation. Did I understand that part of their outreach was to gamers? It was a single phrase and it jumped out at me. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, I'm done. Two minutes left. All right. Adalia, Carrie, Lindsay. I just want to reiterate um, and reemphasize what both Jan and Jim have said about um, the outreach and just the beautifully innovative programs that I'm seeing coming from Milwaukee Art Museum. So that it was just really great to read that. Great, thank you. Sorry. Did I just appreciated how they provided so much relevance um, to family and young folks and were really um, responsive for what they needed and were interested in. Um, I appreciated their uh, collaborative process and planning, um, specifically with the advisory committee, st advisory committee staff and um, key stakeholders and how they have a community task force um, specifically dedicated to exploring authentic partnerships. Thank you. Um, just the highlights that stuck out to me the most, um, and a lot of these things were said, but the fact that there's 500 school tours, the, that the curator of community dialogue position is wonderful, and then their work with the Criminal Justice Symposium, those are, those are the big highlights for me. All right. It sounds like you have enough to score. John, did, were you just- I was just going to gonna ask if there are any best practices here. I would say the community outreach aspect looks to me like a best practice. Yeah. Uh, the neighborhood That's outreach. I would reiterate. Uh, neighborhood uh, Thank you. Um, this is just a question about what they're allowed to um, enter. Uh, they have a very large board of 50. Are they limited to how many board members they can list in that document? Um, at a certain point, I think I think I remember a conversation about this. At a certain point, it's it seems a bit much to have them enter uh, 50 names, etc. I think I had recommended that they attach a board list, um, but I may have just said enter a representative, you know, uh, number. 
Um, truly, uh, it's it's pandemic brain, and I don't remember exactly what I advised. If in fact this is the applicant, um, but uh, at a certain point, I think practicality just limits. <laughs> yeah, I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. I see all of the scores. Fantastic. Then a huge thank you. Um, you have made it through the morning and a little bit into the afternoon, which is taking us right to uh, to lunch. Um, I just want to check in with you all to make sure that a half hour still feels like the right amount of time. Okay. Um, I encourage you to stretch. Uh, the sun's shining here. I don't know if it is there. It's cold, but I'm going out for just a little bit. Um, when we come back at 12.40, so if you want to, you know, jump on at like 12.38 or something. Um, uh, we are gonna start in the multidisciplinary arts organizations category. We're gonna be looking at those small budget organizations uh, with volunteer artists. And I look forward to seeing you then. I will try to get back on at uh, 12.30. Alrighty, thank you all. This has been lovely, yeah. Okay, bye.
Welcome back. Hello, hello. Hey, hey. Did you get outside? I did. I went out and, and brought my garbage cans back up from the end of my driveway. Fresh air and physical exercise. Awesome. That would be correct. That would be correct. And and um, uh, making myself uh, uh, a not reviled member of the neighborhood. <laughs> One m must uh, assume continuing your status as unreviled. <laughs> Well, one one never knows, does one? <laughs> Fair enough. <clears throat> this has been fun. I am more coherent than I expected to be. You are indeed coherent. It is, um, as always. Lovely to have your voice in the mix. It's a little scary. Uh -huh. Looking forward to the final um, conversation too, even though I know that uh, everybody's gonna be exhausted at that point, hoping to get at least a, a few maybe have a post-mortem. <clears throat> there are my notes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Big and bold. Those are the changes right. that I wanna make. <laughs> Great, thank you. Love those. <laughs> so I don't forget or have trouble finding them. I needed to write them large. I hear that. Oh my goodness. Karen, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and hop back off and I'll jump back on in a little bit. Caitlin, thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Glad thank you. Caitlin. Glad y'all could get outside for a, for a few. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'll be I'll see you in a bit. All right. Bye. How are the lovely young female Geshkos? Awesome. They are uh, on Fridays. They are both done at like noon, which is a whole new piece of virtual education that I just need to adapt to as I work from home. Right. So <laughs> so they're ready for the weekend at noon. <laughs> And I'm not. I mean, you know. <laughs> well, you are, but you're not. You know? It's all good. It's all good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So thank you for asking. How's uh, it If we were not recording the the meeting, <laughs> I would share a couple of very special moments that have happened this week. <laughs> oh, dear. That we have survived. <laughs> Like self hugs. <laughs> I went out my kids on public record. Oh my goodness! No, they are awesome. It's all good. <laughs> they were awesome. <laughs> all righty. I'm going to uh, um, welcome back Carrie and Jan too, and. John's here, yay, fantastic. And, okay. Alrighty, I have 1240. So um, if we have uh, Adalia back too, I think I saw her. I'm here. Yay, good. For some reason, you're not. Oh, maybe it's because is your camera on? Huh. Yes. I've got Mine you down. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows why this happens? <clears throat> I can't see your face, but I'm delighted that you're you're here and uh, and I will um, kick it off then to uh, the review here. Uh, again, we have left the world of visual arts um, focused organizations and we are now in the the land of multidisciplinary arts organizations uh, those uh, small budget organizations with volunteer artists are the ones that we are focusing on first here so um, we begin uh, in Viroqua with artists and friends and Jim you get to start 
Artists and Friends, a multidisciplinary volunteer small organization with a budget of uh, an average budget of forty three thousand five hundred. Uh, this is an organization that was incorporated in 2012 and is now on um, it was originally uh, it was originally doing business as the ARC until 2019 and it has just reconstituted itself into uh, uh, into a facility known as the Commons Community and Art Center. Its purpose is to nurture an appreciation for the arts within the community, inspire individual creative development, and to give new life to a historic building using environmentally sound principles. Um, in May of 2012, a 123-year-old church uh, was uh, was donated to the community. Um, it, had, it was uh, renovated to have a 90-seat theater, several studios, uh, art installations, a commercial kitchen, a dining room slash gallery space, uh, and space for artists of all kinds in the community. In 2019, a uh, newly reconstituted board take, uh, took over after the, the founding director chose to leave. Um, they they did a community wide focus group in order to re engage and organize the organization, and they created a partnership with Thoreau College, uh, which uh, occupies some of the space in the building, shares some of the space in the building with them. The county population is thirty thousand. They serve one hundred seventy five artists, twenty five hundred adults, five hundred children with 15 events a year, 16 events per year. They currently have no paid staff uh, and they have reacted to common uh, to COVID uh, by starting activities called like live streaming at the commons and radio plays. Two minutes. Um, once again, the building was donated. Um, lots of volunteers there. They added to the dining room uh, with the cafe gallery they added a civil rights library which i thought was remarkable they have a number of partnerships around the community as so many of the these small organizations in in key buildings in small towns have um, i love this this line it is important to note the extent to which the commons fosters connection across demographic divides across lines of race, class, gender, sexual orientation, age, and ability. The community has truly become a vibrant, diverse, intergenerational space of creative collaboration. And they have 700 subscribers to their newsletter. Um, once again, the focus group was remarkable. I've got a couple of more comments on the next page. I want more information on the free store and dining in the dining room gallery operation. They talked about uh, uh, they they talked about the free store twice, and they talked about dining in the dining room. I don't know how you get to dine in the dining room. Uh, whether you whether the cafe operation is just walk in, or whether there's something else associated with it. They both sound like terrific outreach. I want more information. Um, thank you for the simple information of your operating deficits, uh, which uh, which depreciation as we talked about before this is a fine young organization in a fine old building reinventing itself it's a great story great. thank you jim all righty lindsay um jim it's like you're reading my mind because i had in bold that i want to know what the free store is too um, sounds like a great opportunity. And, and in general, um, I wanted to learn a little bit more about their classes and their non-performance related events. Um, they did they did list a few in the narrative um, later on as we dug deeper, but um, I, I just was curious. I wanna know more. Um, but they did shift, they did some COVID, some activities since COVID, so that's great. Um, they are actively using this time to build strong foundations, as Jim mentioned. They're um, recently have shifted their name and some some focus and they own their building and dedicated volunteer group, some good partnerships um, and some good in-kind support that they're getting. Um, 
They are working to strengthen their relationship with their local leaders. I wanted to know a little bit more about what student outreach opportunities um, existed. Uh, I just, th there was just something about the narrative that I felt like they were doing great work and I wanted to know more. And I, like, I, I felt like they were, they were missing, something was missing, which is a good thing um, that I noticed that something was missing, but um, they recently underwent some visioning focus groups and um, they, it sounds like they're using their feedback. Um, there's no specific mention of written surveys. Um, most of the feedback, it sounded like, was just verbal and part of discussions. So if they're not already doing that, I thought that would be helpful. And then they did submit an in-progress organizational plan, um, which was good to see. Thank you. All right, Carrie or Jan or Adalia. I, I would just to add. I, I echo ditto what both Jim and Lindsay have said. I'm in everything from free store on. <laughs> All right. Jen, did I hear the same from you? Yeah, I, I, I'm just always amazed looking at some of these small, mighty organizations. They just uh, are, are just um, so endearing. I, I'm, and kudos go out to them for what they managed to accomplish on volunteer efforts and small budget. How about you, Adalia? Um, and I, I think it's so wonderful how they um, connect like the rural residents, um, really providing a destination um, for gathering with art beyond just like outdoor recreation. Great. Well, thank you all. It sounds like you are ready to score. Done. That's what I forgot. Now it works. <clears throat> We're halfway. I just noticed that too. Oh, I did too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All the scores are in. Thank you. All right, next we're going to Wyoiga and the Wyoiga Arts Organization. And Lindsay, it's you. Wonderful. We are in Wyoiga, Wisconsin. I had never heard of Wyoiga, so I was uh, in interested to learn more about them. They have a budget of about 122000 and their mission is to create an environment that encourages individuals of all ages to express themselves, focus on youth participation in workshops and programs, support a strong community by means of shared experience, observing theater and film and creating original projects. Nas national reach, bring talent to Wyoiga in the form of original plays, scripts, films, and guest artists. Bring new works in theater and film created in Wyoiga to other cities. So they create uh, a lot of original material and since their inception listed 50 plays, four musicals and several other art shows. They do a lot of workshops and involve youth in all projects. They specifically said all projects, which is great. Um, continued working on renovating the Gerald Opera House, which is their um, main facility. During COVID, they have shifted to some Zoom opportunities and drive-in movies. And they will hold a film festival online, I think in November, they said. Um, their main um, two staff members have extensive experience, um, which is a great asset to this organization. And they have partnerships with the schools, the Rotary and the Chamber, to name a few. And they listed that their sponsor support is growing. Um, they have a junior board, which I thought was fantastic, and I had never, I don't know that I've seen that anywhere. So they have a specific junior board. Their programming is div diverse, a lot of youth inclusion. They are definitely helping boost the economy in this small town. They ha have won the best business award from their chamber. And um, they include their local leaders in productions, including um, they, they created a video about the heroin problem um, in, in Wisconsin and well, nationally. Um, some weaknesses or comments. Um, I wanted to learn a little bit more about some of the large donations they received in 2019 and what they did with those surpluses. Um, did that go towards their building renovations or how was that used? Um, I didn't, the budget numbers again didn't seem to match um, for me. 
and um, they mentioned that they're developing a five-year strategic plan. So they didn't really include anything there. I would have loved to have just seen the draft or kind of where they're they're starting from, but they did um, mention that they're working on that. All right, thank you. Carrie. Yeah, so to go backwards from what Lindsay was saying, it was, I think the strategic plan and the planning is that I really stood out for me and how there needs to be um, more use or development and then use of that. I, it sounds like the organization really does do a lot of things, but relies a lot on the energy of of the founders. Um, so that's just more of a comment than, than a critique right there. Um, it was impressive about their work with the youth. It would be helpful when assessing the application to have some quantitative data um, to show impact um, and then how they used the survey cards to help inform the decision making. So some examples of what they did based on what they've heard. And I, I also would have liked, um, and this, a lot has happened um, everywhere, but um, and it's in the last few years. So they presented what they've been doing um, over the last four years. I really would have liked to have seen a breakdown um, of what it has specifically by year and then what was in 2019 and what they had, had planned to do. So that that breakdown wasn't very clear in the, in the application, more just to kind of assess growth more than anything else. Um, and, and that's all. All right, thank you. Jim, Adalia, Jim. Let me address the elephant in the uh, in the room. Please scan your financials so that all the pa pages face in the same direction. Um, that was a little awkward. I couldn't turn my computer upside down in order to read the even pages, the even numbered pages. Um, uh, and once again, as as Lindsay said, the the 990 does not match the posted figures. And and please uh, please give us some explanation of that uh, in the future. Uh, beyond that, I think this is an extraordinary organization. Uh, one of uh, one of four, I think, that are essentially uh, two people going into a community and making a huge difference uh, through, with their creativity. Um, I, I think we have four examples of that in the in the upcoming discussions, including this one, and uh, that is so exciting to see. Um, I want to know more about the drive-through service at the Wapaka County Fair, Fairgrounds. Drive-in movies I get, but I want to know about the drive-through circus. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you. I thought it was great to have a musical workshop um, for high school band students and kind of connecting them with the Fox Valley Symphony Orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, and also they had a concert for the Oneida Nation featuring um, Native American musicians. So that's noteworthy. Thank you. Jan, anything else or has it been said? I, I don't think I have much else to add. Um, All right. Then go ahead and um, put the scores in and off we go. All right, all the scores are in. All right. Next, we move to Portage and the Portage Center for the Arts. And Adalia, it's you. All right. So, the mission statement um, is to promote and foster the arts by providing a community venue and programming for visual arts, performing arts, and arts education. Um, we believe in developing alliances between itself um, and arts educators 
children, youth, and other supporters of the arts. Um, their budget is 186869 um, So they are home to um, Zona Gale Young People's Theater, um, Gale Singers Community Choir, um, monthly lunch break series, um, performing arts concert series, and regular location for Portage Area Community Theater productions. Um, and they also have a student recital series. Um, and for building awareness in the community, they participated in Portage Living Windows, um, where they designed themed windows. Um, looks like it was holiday themed. Um, during COVID, they've pivoted to some online virtual workshops, um, especially specifically for theater. Um, and they found that that has attracted new audiences that they have not reached before with that digital aspect. Um, They've completed phase two of a capital campaign um, with building restorations, including a new sound system. Um, they've also used this time uh, with the pandemic to revamp their outdoor banners, um, working directly with local artists in the area. Um, they've also had a collaboration with um, Divine Savior Healthcare, providing um, exhibits specifically for um, the residential care facility We've had poetry readings, um, board and staff, they've had consistent staffing for eight years. Um, let's see. They've mentioned that um, they want to do more fundraising events, but it wasn't entirely clear to me, um, specifically in their marketing plan. So I feel like more details on that would have benefited them. Um, they received feedback about business who are businesses who are interested in hosting some exhibits. Um, and so they created this business after five program. And they've also mentioned that one of their goals in their planning is to um, find out specifically which targeted groups have not been highly visible in their audiences. And they listed them out, um, senior citizen groups, women's groups, youth groups, um, singles, 4-H scouts, etc. Um, Two minutes. I think in their budget, I only saw one page of their 990, um, so I wasn't entirely clear about why they didn't include all of it or just not include it. Um, and also in their goals, they had listed kind of in different columns of what, how, when, who, but they only had filled out the what category. Um, so I'd be curious to see that more complete in you know, future submissions. That's about it for me. Great, thank you. Ben. Um, I wanted to note, that I know they have a very small staff and it's, all, it's the three part-time members. Uh, so that struck me in terms of trying to maintain uh, uh, a monthly exhibit schedule, knowing what it's like to rotate out exhibitions on a regular basis, plus do some community theater, choir concerts, and uh, uh, an, an additional lunchtime series that uh, they seem to try to engage in and uh, fulfill their, their multi-level mission. Um, I thought it was commendable that they've been uh, fundraising to upgrade their facilities with, with such a small staff and um, thought that uh, one of their outreach programs, at least to the healthcare facility with the art exhibit is, is one more undertaking that, that certainly is uh, commendable to uh, get out again with a small staff. The um, um, initiative to build new audience certainly um, is one that um, struck me from their strategic plan and, and uh, trying to work toward that. Uh, I, mean, I would have liked to have seen, uh, I, I'd caught a 2010 date on their strategic plan and, and would have liked to have seen some something more up to date or something that was maybe more reflective, but it sounds certainly like a, a reflective organization from the um, work that they're trying to move forward. Um, so I would hope that um, some of their future plans include some um, uh, additional endowment uh, building and uh, some sustainability uh, for longer ter term support and and um, extending the efforts of the, that part time staff. So and just to clarify, did you did you say that their strategic plan is from 2010? 
I thought that's what I that's what I had noted in my um. All right. Well, while you look for that, and I will double check that, um, uh, if we could hear from the other three, that would be great. I didn't really have anything to add. I mean, just echoing, they're doing a lot with three part time staff. Like, that is a lot to do. So, just to commend them on the work that they're doing in their community. It's basically the same. Yes. Ditto. Okay, thank you. I agree with that. Uh, they mentioned phases two and three of the capital project in a couple of in a couple of ways. Um, and over be, because it was so uh, so central to a couple of points they were trying to make in the narrative, an overview of the project. What were the three phases? What was the timeline? What was your fundraising success? that would have been very helpful so that we had an idea of uh, of the context in which the other the other activity was happening oh i just have a quick other note but this isn't like really based on like the scoring but they mentioned that exactly 25 percent of the people they serve is each of the categories and i just i don't know i thought that was really interesting to <laughs> if that really is the case that's crazy <laughs> The other thing is that they they did a very nice summary of their service area in the uh, uh, in in the initial on the initial page. Uh, they they helped us understand the portage area very well. Yeah, um, their uh, their strategic plan is a decade old. You're working on it. Alrighty. Well, if that is it for the uh, conversation, please go ahead and score. I see all the scores. Great. All righty then. Let us move to uh, next application, which is from Art Start up in Rhinelander. And Carrie, this is yours. Okay. Art Start is an art and community center, uh, relatively young. It began in 2011 and is in um, the old post office building in downtown Rhinelander. Um, its budget of is just on the cusp of small and, and mid size, um, so it's in the smaller category of just over two hundred thousand. It has one hundred events annually, serving two thousand adults and one hundred and fifty youth, with quite a robust exhibit schedule and concerts and, and kids arts. Um, but I noted. And the, the strength of, of the application is that it does have a it had a really creative collaborative responses to um, what the pandemic was throwing at it and it was able to adjust its, adjust its programming to that. Um, what's really notable about this application, let's see if I can find it, is that it has a partnership with Nicolette, I think it's Nicolette College, um, and they developed a, a joint position which has really helped the organization have a further reach. Um, and so that is an innovative and um, way to maximize or extend your, your resources. So it also allows the staff to get connected in other places and the staff is very well connected within the community. And the application shows that it does advance and advocate for the public value of art. Um, it, the application does ni it nicely explains the collaborative planning process that the applicant uses and how it involves many stakeholders. Um, in fact, I, I even wrote it's a model of collaborative planning. 
Um, and so I think that it does should be highlighted for that reason and a model for even larger organizations to consider. So um, I was impressed by that. And I also noted that the planning and evaluation tools that are in the support materials are are noteworthy. Um, so they they really do provide a good, I wouldn't even say snapshot, a, a good sense of what the organization um, is capable of doing and has done. Thank you. Alrighty then, Jim. I was struck by this line in their uh, in their application. Our goal is to exemplify best practices on leading community conversations, fair compensation, educational opportunities, and a general stepping up to the plate to take responsibility for the change we need to see in our rural communities regarding race awareness. This is an organization that is facing the typical challenges of rural organizations, but it has highly creative and self-reflective responses to them. It is engaged locally, regionally, and nationally. Um, it's a community art development organization that uses art and culture as tools for creative change, community building, and promoting innovation. I do. I also love the uh, the connection with Nicolette. Um, I would like more information on the School of the Arts Revival Project. How's it doing? Uh, School of the Arts was uh, was part of the initial rural arts initiative uh, out of the UW Madison Extension, which has been shedding them for the past five years, uh, and they tried to revive revive it after the extension program uh, let it go. So I'm I'm curious as to how it uh, how it's working. Um, Overall, I think this is an exemplary rural arts organization. Thank you. Other comments? Um, I'm sure that the organizational plan makes perfect sense to them, but I did have a hard time following how the staff it was the it was clear how the board worked and the committees and who was the chair and who was on the committees but there was something about how was staff integrated with that um that was not clear to me thank you Andrew Dahlia, do you have anything else to add to the conversation before we score them no, I don't think so. Okay. Great. Thank you, Ben. Go ahead and All right, we move now to Plymouth and the Plymouth Art Foundation. And Jan, you lead this one. Okay. I should also mention that we have moved into the mid-size uh, multidisciplinary arts organization as, that work with uh, volunteer artists. Okay, um, mid-sized organization with a $259,000 budget uh, started in um, around 1993 with just gallery space and now has um, grown to um, stage space and, and uh, a multi-arts organization over time. So um, presenting um, uh, really maximizing the use of the, the facility for programming, um, serving about 20,000 visitors a year, which seemed impressive to me for a small organization uh, and having 400 memberships, um, but presents about 32 plays, a variety of musical performances using both local and, and uh, outside talents. 
um, and then other multi arts education from um, music to dance. So uh, really seem to make uh, good use of their space uh, as well as the rotating exhibitions that they use for um, local artists and, and regional artists. Um, they're, um, so they're, they're making use of both locally sourced talent and, and professional uh, outside talent, um, it seems, and um, uh, making best use of the community assets for um, the, the audiences and really serve a population of about, um, local population of about 8,000. So um, that seems, um, their visitation seems impressive for that. Their staff appear to have a broad arts background and um, uh, can leverage their talents to expand the educational op options for the organization. Um, and then the, uh, they make use of their exhibitions to provide um, uh, educational programming for um, their, uh, their local um, uh, students. I noticed some slight deficits that, that um, as I, I noted, um, what seemed unexplained in the past, uh, past two fiscal years. Um, one of their challenges, um, um, but their board members seem to have um, some longevity and loyalty to the organization, um, causing me to also wonder if they, they used term limits at all and, and rotated that in any way. Um, they um, seem to have a staff, very small part-time staff and their executive director, director that um, uh, certainly can serve the needs of the um, organization, but um, it seemed like maybe down the road, um, something in education uh, and marketing and promotion might be helpful if they did some um, uh, future planning. I thought they were uh, responsive to accessibility needs of the community, adding uh, things for hearing and visual, visual impairments, particularly for their performance space. Um, and um, um, the new toddler class offerings and art camps uh, serving youth were a nice initiative to extend uh, to uh, different age groups. Um, In summary, I thought their their small budget uh, really leveraged the use of all and local local services uh, for the community um, and fostered art experiences that engage and provide a, uh, a service to the community. It's demonstrated incremental growth over time and um, uh, provides a broad variety of programming uh, with, with what I think is limited resources. So. Um, their last strategic planning effort was was quite some time ago. I had noted 2008, and it would probably benefit them to revisit that um, and take a look at their growth opportunities and um, evaluate that. Um, overall, I think they've worked hard to to engage the community and, and build support. So um, be nice to see their plans for the future. All righty. And you said the strategic plan was from 2008? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, other, other comments on this one? We go to Carrie next. Uh, I don't really have much, to, really anything of substantive content to add to Jan. Um, she was really thorough. I was impressed with uh, the, the great diversity disciplines that are at the organization and uh, the great scope of programming that they have. Um, very robust slate of artistic and educational programming last year. Um, I also noted that they have a, a good relationship with both the city and the Chamber of Commerce. I think that's important for both promoting arts and education, but also looking at economic development. So they're weaving all of that together um, and the same comment about um, the strategic plan and that the marketing and promotion plan um, is more about looking at the membership potential rather than looking at marketing and promotion more broadly. 
Thank you. Other comments? I um, was interested in, um, it sounds like they're doing a lot uh, in typical years, which is wonderful and was already stated. Um, I would like to learn a little bit more about what's been happening since COVID. I, they did, they talked about some virtual classes and things, but just wanted to learn a little bit more. Um, looks like they do have a broad base for financial support um, spread out amongst their sponsors, their fundraising events, memberships, uh, ticket class revenue, et cetera. So it's the very, it's varied, which is always great to diversify funding. Um, I did catch that they, they have one person devoted to education services, um, which I thought was wonderful that with small staff, they do have one person that is, that's their focus. Um, community driven ideas and programming, um, growth in the variety of programming. Uh, oh, and then the last thing um, that just caught my attention was that they mentioned that they're a part of not only the, their, their own planning, but a part of the conversation for a community wide planning, um, which is great to have the arts at, uh, at the table for those discussions. Thank you. Other comments? Yeah, you, you want to go? Yeah, I thought um, it was interesting to hear how, again, being like a diverse organization, how they expose youth to opera with their like Opera for the Young program. Um, I just think that that's not a really common pairing. Um, and I agree that I saw that they had a broad financial support base, um, but they did mention how their base is graying. And I think, you know, in an updated strategic plan, they could mention on how to cultivate relations with younger donors. I just want to say that organizations have been saying that their audiences were graying since I wasn't. <laughs> Presum <laughs> presumably, gray heads are a renewable resource, either that or very <laughs> old. <laughs> um, Loyalty and longevity. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Lindsay. I just want to um, um, maybe correct myself, and, and I was misleading. I had used an abbreviation that uh, led me to think uh, education. So I, I had uh, the, an ED uh, abbreviation in there um, and quickly reading my notes. So um, rereading what I had uh, stated. So just for the record uh, was uh, noting that uh, there didn't seem to be um, an apparent marketing role and promotion role that could be utilized and was likely taken on by the ED us, you know, quickly reading that, I said, oh, you know, ED role missing in terms of education. So I apologize. Thank uh, you for clarifying. Yeah. Sorry, Jim, what? On that point, um, it, it looks as if their planning, budgeting, and marketing are done by teams. Uh, a visual arts team of 12, a performing arts team of six, an education team of nine. I thought that was an interesting way to to arrange things. And they have 264 volunteers. That's that's kind of an astonishing number. A um, couple of other comments on the next page, maybe. Oh, yes. Um, I, I saw that they have they have a healthy fund balance, so I'm not really concerned for the survi survival of the organization. But you're right, uh, whoever said uh, they really need to provide an explanation of their deficit years and let us know that they're planning on how to avoid them, because the fund balance won't last forever at this rate. Thank you. Thank you. All right. If there are no other comments, go ahead and score, please. All the scores are in. <clears throat> Great. All right, then I am going to move us uh, to Madison, and we are looking at the TNW Ensemble Theater. And Jim, you are the primary. As soon as I get to that page, I will happily, well, as soon as okay. I get, as soon as I can get the open button out from under your picture. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, teams. There we go. Okay. Uh, TNW Ensemble Theater, a multidisciplinary uh, paid 
small organization with an annual budget of about fifty-four thousand um, dollars. They uh, they recently changed their name. They, it was uh, uh, in 1985 they were formed as uh, Tappet, uh, as a as a tap dance theater company. Uh, the two people got together to, to form this occasion. One of them was a tap dancer. The other was uh, was a playwright. And uh, they created educational activities, uh, educational programs for youth, which they toured around the state and around the Midwest. Uh, really very good stuff. Uh, Donna Peckett and Danielle Dresden. Um, they changed their name when, when they started uh, doing original works for adults, they changed their name to Tap It slash New Works, and now they have uh, have changed their name again to TNW Ensemble Theater. The mission is that they create, produce, and perform original works, collaborating with artists working on in the discipline of theater, tap dance, visual arts, and music. Uh, bring it, they bring the arts to audiences of all ages and backgrounds, encourages participation in the arts, and enriches the lives of individuals and communities. They produce and teach. They work in educational theater. They do original works for adults and family audiences, and they do workshops with youth. And uh, some of those are, are significantly profound with, um, uh, with uh, disadvantaged uh, youth. Um, they do workshops for older adults and youth with disabilities. There is an eight member board of directors. Um, they have a reserve fund and they are, they say at this time, we're indeed so fortunate to have assets that allow us to continue working for at least the next two or three years without going into debt or completely closing our doors. Uh, two minutes. They want credit for that. <laughs> and they get credit for that. Um, they, they, they are concerned about the changing youth arts performance market. It once was uh, a fact that communities all over the state and all over the Midwest would hire them to come in and give performances. So that was their major work. And, and workshops were on the side. Now there is less simple performance activity, and so they find themselves doing, uh, doing more and more workshop work, which is probably more profound. Uh, for the for the recipients, uh, one of their reactions to the parking lot previews was uh, a preview of a postponed play in 15 minute chunks delivered from a balcony of their building to people who were in the parking lot below. I think that's a splendid notion. Um, let's see. Their SWOT they, they say SWOT analysis meets our artic art uh, artistic vision. And uh, they use the, the usual Italian, uh, the Ita usual evaluation tools, whoops, uh, including peer review. And I have to uncover my comments again. Here we go. Um, they have a splendid history of risk taking art uh, and prudent management. And um, like, uh, like, they are very like the Wyoiga. Uh, organization that we looked at a little while ago, but they are statewide and not facility based. Thank you, Jim. All righty. I really am a fan of that Italian evaluation. I think that's awesome. Um, Adalia, if you would please uh, chime in. Yeah, I um, just want to echo everything that Jim said. I agree with. Um, they really emphasize that they're they have a lean organizational model and that they can easily pivot to new opportunities. Um, uh, I really appreciate how they have workshops for um, older adults, but also youth with disabilities, um, really focusing on uh, facilitating public discussion on topics like social justice um, and really wonderful how they reach out to various um, venues um, and some of them like non-traditional like cafes for example and um, really going into the schools um, they meant I really enjoyed listening to um, the podcast that they provided for a fourth grade class and how um, they could use the medium of a podcast to kind of studies classes um, and kind of bring history to life and um, kind of connect those impacts with their own lives um, and 
Yeah, again, I feel like I really appreciate them reaching out to older adults to explore artistic expression and not just think of it as a young thing. Um, really, I feel like very timely, especially when people are confined to their homes. Um, I thought that they, they didn't provide a marketing plan and I feel like um, that could be something that the board could approach. Um, and they also mentioned that they want to formalize their youth programs and residency structures. So again, I think that would be something beneficial for the board to um, visit. And I, I just want to call out that the, the smaller organizations are not required to do marketing plans. So that is why you don't see I that see. in the mix. We, uh, we don't give them unlimited support, optional support material <laughs> buttons. Gotcha. So that's probably what's going on. Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, and, uh, and thank you for whoever um, underlined the fact that we are, in fact, in uh, in small budget uh, uh, organizations that pay their artists. So, alrighty, thank you. Um, other comments on this one? Uh, I'm I'm just impressed when I read some of these and and see the longevity of the work of some of these organizations, starting in 1985, and. Um, still operating uh, with such flexibility uh, and such a small budget with such enthusiasm to jump into the community and, and uh, find uh, such a variety of creative opportunities that they can present to people. Um, so I think uh, their, their, their size uh, certainly demonstrates a nimbleness and, and uh, that sort of ensemble feel of, of being able to work together and, and come up with new solutions very, very easily um, to um, uh, representing themselves in, an, in another way. The, the um, porch concerts, the, porch concerts, the uh, parking lot concerts, uh, the, the uh, program, um, reaching out to a variety of age groups. I, I just think it's uh, an interesting, uh, very interesting model. I even noticed that um, uh, the sensitivity of adding a sign language interpreter to their their board of directors is, um, uh, I think, really stellar and um, really just a thoughtful organization presenting some interesting new things <laughs> with no money. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. All right, Lindsay or Carrie. Yeah, I was uh, I was impressed as well, um, and especially with their attention to serving. Um, underserved groups as a priority. And then I, I wrote that they are a champion for women and minorities and other topics um, that, and that's really important work that they're doing. So not only are they doing great work, but very important work. Um, uh, one tiny thing I did, the Vimeo link didn't work for me. I don't know if that happened mm -hmm. for anybody else, but um, so I, I wonder sometimes if people submit links and then, but then time passes since they submitted it until the review process happens and those links are no longer active. And because it happened to me a few times. Were you able to find in these in these instances um, other uh, samples of their artistic work so that you could um, review that? Um, I can't remember now what they all included as their work samples, but um, so yeah, I did feel like I got a sense of their work. It's just, I guess, just a comment yeah, um, for when people are writing the application to make sure if they include a link, that that link will be active for a duration of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just want to, uh, again, echo what everybody said, and I really got the sense with this application is that they kind of live the passion for the arts. Um, it's in the narrative that you don't even have to worry that they're publicly advocate. It's just who they are and it's what the organization is. And I, I just, I really, I really enjoyed feeling it and reading it. Great, thank you. All right, well, on that note, please score it. How do I score? There it is. I lost the submit button. <laughs> Don't lose the submit button. Right away. I see you found it, Jim. They're all in. Oh, good, awesome. <laughs> all right. Um, Heading a little bit uh, east into Milwaukee, we are um, at Quasimondo and Adalia, it's you. Thank you. 
Um, so their mission statement, um, they want to make original performance that these hearts and minds through devising collaboration and education. The interdisciplinary ensemble enriches the community with diverse perspectives and inspiring art interactions. Um, their budget is around $63,000 and um, they were founded in 2012, so um, relatively new. Um, again, centered on experimental programming. Um, they have four productions in talkbacks, um, and they provide a comprehensive list of all of those from 2017 to 2020 in the um, narrative. And um, midway through their initiative to create Center for the Arts and Education on Milwaukee's North Side, um, co-produced um, a production with UW Parkside and Milwaukee students. Um, they also premiered um, On the Spectrum, which is written and performed by the ensemble member um, Tom Cowley, and really focused on uh, mental health care system and the stigma surrounding autism, which I thought was really important. Um, and they really focus on blurring the boundaries of art forms. Um, from COVID, they pivoted to some YouTube channel creation. Um, they are largely volunteer. Um, and inter interdisciplinary participants um, really focused on resource sharing and empowering individuals with their workshops, eliminating boundaries. Um, let's see. They have free public workshops and really emphasize skill development. They have an internship for high school and college students. Um, let's see, and they also have a pay what you can ticketing initiative and also provide volunteer ushering as more opportunities to participate in their programming. Um, they consistently share their impacts through social media, newsletters, and mailings to their community. Um, one thing I thought was nice was that through Facebook, they had asked a survey asking for favorite memories. And once they gathered that information um, and found a specific program that was most meaningful, um, they decided to share that online um, during COVID. So really continuing that connection and engagement with community. Um, and one suggestion for um, strengthening their proposal is that in the organizational plan that they um, posted in their supplemental materials, it was really more um, a chart of job descriptions. Um, and I, I would have liked to see more about how they make their administrative and artistic decisions, just kind of exemplifying that process a little bit more. And Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Um, Lindsay. All right, just to um, echo and add to uh, what Dahlia said. Uh, the I, I thought that their shift to reaching their audiences through YouTube during COVID was a good idea. I want I wish they would have elaborated a little bit more on I just my note says how. Um, so I wondered what what are they doing through YouTube? Um, because that's not I haven't seen a lot of groups list that as um, what they've done during co um, for virtual presentations during COVID. Um, lots of great partnerships, really a good quality list of artists, staff, and board members, um, which is great. Uh, good participation in the community. Topics are educational, diverse, and thought-provoking. I They mentioned that they hire artists who represent their demographics. Um, I thought that was great to be, or maybe I just noticed that from what they said was their community. Um, but uh, I thought that's a great model to follow. Um, and then in general, in uh, all of these applications, I enjoy when um, value, as we all know, evaluation of the arts is so tricky. And so when groups have given specific examples of how, of how they've used, especially surveys and feedback, um, to um, make a change in the organization. I think that's great. And they included an example of um, the feedback that the audiences wanted talkbacks after each performance, as opposed to just one performance out of the weekend. Um, so I thought that was great. Thank you. Other comments? I think I was impressed by their um, um, initiatives to acquire um, 
spaces and and renovate them to work within and um, uh, stimulate the neighborhood that they are working within. Um, I, I thought that was um, uh, really a, a nice opportunity to partner with um, where they are uh, and create some kind of fresh creative outcome. Um, so the revitalization of neighborhood, neighborhoods, um, high artistic quality uh, and, and engaging a variety of partners, including their neighborhood in, in that creative process. So um, I think those were just strong points for them. Thank you. Barry? I don't really have anything to add. Um, it's been right. said. Coming back off the neighborhood uh, and the acquisition of the building issue, once again, I find myself um, uh, feeling cautious on behalf of, a, of a, an organization that's doing great work, but taking on the, uh, the, the financial burden of a building, <laughs> building eat, eat money every day. And um, what I, I would have appreciated uh, discussion of a plan to pay the operating expenses of the new building. Uh, and there was mention of a 14 member advisory group that was helping them with the transition to the new space. I would have liked information about what that 14 member advisory group is is uh, is doing for the organization. Um, maybe that would have alleviated some of the some of the, the natural um, uh, fear that I had uh, <laughs> on the path uh, as as I read about the building. Um, I think this is an exemplary group doing unique work on a shoestring, and uh, and it deserves all of the uh, all of the uh, encouragement that it can uh, it can encounter. I'm just looking quickly to see whether I had another note here. Um, I think other than that, uh, oh, 70 percent of their audience members participate in post show talkbacks. Wow. That is a testament to engaging work. Thank you. All right, if there are no more comments, please go ahead and score. Jim, that's so funny how you look at the building. It's like the, just the perspective because I look at it like a, a such an asset to own the own a building, and it, it, it is an asset. But <laughs> but I carried one on my back for, uh, <laughs> or I carried several on my back for forty seven years. So yeah, building. So you know, <laughs> you know what the burdens can be too. Yeah. All the scores are in. All right. That takes us to the last of our small budget um, paying artists organizations. We are going to stay in Milwaukee for Theater Gigante and Jim. And as soon as I can get all of my things here, there you go. It was Theater Gigante's um, uh, financial statement that I could not get to come up. Um, okay. It, okay. I kept getting an error 404 uh, document not available. Uh, error on it. Uh, it it you know it, it it's there. I mean it's a live link, but it doesn't go anywhere. And that's not. Did anyone problem. else have that trouble as well with this one? Please continue, Jim. Sorry, I'm going to see if I can pull it up for you. Not a problem. All righty. Uh, founded in 19, uh, Theater Gigante is a multidisciplinary uh, paid artist, small organization, $84,000 budget. Uh, it was founded in 1987, uh, dedicated to the creation and presentation of performance work that integrates theater, dance, text, and music, through which the company fosters interdisciplinary collaborations and original work. Uh, they do issue-oriented projects. Uh, usually involving 38 artists, 1,750 adults, 900 students. There are two administrative staff members and nine board members. They do three main stage productions a year, two school shows, 
which they uh, which uh, which they bring to the schools through the ACE program uh, of the Milwaukee Symphony, and they do smaller events. The themes have included worker burnout, LGBTQ rights, informing and spying, brain damage and suicide, destructive land development of the jungle, treatment of animals, social castes, coupledom and aging, and greed and corruption, and they too are deeply engaged in talkbacks. Um, they have an international collaboration with an Italian theater company, uh, the realization of which was unfortunately short-circuited by COVID, but they hope to do it in the future. Uh, their strengths are uniqueness, fiscal responsibility, partnerships, um, and they have received, uh, uh, again, uh, an example of um, an example of touching your uh, your constituency, they have been receiving unsolicited donations during COVID. Uh, they have a unique niche in the theater scene, both stylistically and thematically, uh, and they try not to present issues in a black and white matter, uh, manner. Uh, they try to ask people to be comfortable with uncertainty and ambiguity, and ambiguity is my middle name, so uh, I'm always glad to see that. Um, the artistic directors do most of the planning. Uh, they do respond to talkbacks and use the feedback they get from those. They use reviews and reactions. There are not very many formal evaluation tools. Um, uh, they gave a very good explanation of a financial discrepancy, um, but I wasn't able to check it out on the financial statement. And they have a history of doing important work. All right. Thank you, Jim. I have emailed you the copy that I've downloaded of their finances, so you can scan that as we are moving to uh, Lindsay for your second reader comments. I do not have a lot to add to that. That was a, um, uh, I feel the same way, Jim. They, they really are great. I think they're doing wonderful work. Um, so this is just a very minor thing, but looking at all of like the questions and ticking off all the boxes, I um, was missing information on how their, besides their partnerships, how Theater Gigante is involved with um, the rest of like the community in general and um, their local leaders for sure. I didn't see a lot about how they reach out to local leaders. Is that in terms of articulating their public value? Yeah. Yeah, inv inviting them to their events or yes, exactly. All right. Thank you. Other comments from Jan or Carrie or Adalia? I don't have anything to add. Okay. A remarkable group uh, doing good um, uh, social impact material. I do wonder um, how much of that decision making in regards to themes that they select, and it's a quite a wonderful scope of themes, how much is informed by um, outside community? I mean, or, you know, I just, I just was curious as to how that decision making happens. And maybe I just missed it. It looked to me as if it's primarily centered on the artistic directors. But it may come from the talkback work. They they did mention that they get a lot of uh, a lot of feedback from the. They take the talkback seriously. It'd be interesting to to um, hear where the talkbacks take them and how they use that for a decision making process because of the edginess of some of their material. I have looked at the uh, at, at the first couple of pages of the 990, and uh, it does not alter my uh, uh, my conclusion at all. Uh, good work done on a shoestring. Adalia, <laughs> did you have something to, to add? Yeah, I was just going to say I thought it was really important how they mentioned they bring on psychiatrists and uh, um, talkbacks just to further unpack, I think, um, the themes that they present. I think that's really important. Thank you. And I would All love, right, if that, go I, ahead, Jim. I would love to get these folks and, uh, and the last group that we just did 
and, uh, uh, Quasimondo and uh, TNW and the folks from Wyoiga all in a room together and uh, <laughs> let them bounce off one another and come out having changed the world. <laughs> Well, maybe that's a uh, panel recommendation we'll take to the board and have the staff uh, invite those groups to come together via Zoom or something. All righty. Thank you all for that. Please score if there's nothing more on there. I was just losing a connection. Did anyone else? I have a little bit of one. That worked. Okay. It's fixed for me now. Okay, all the scores are in. All right. Well, then you have made it to the break without any complaining whatsoever. Not that I would expect any, but you have seriously deserved this <laughs> stretch break. Please take it. Do you want to take 10 minutes or do you want to take 15? How are you feeling? We should we go uh, till two or um, come a couple of minutes early? 10's good. 10 minutes. I will see you here at uh, 157. <laughs> All right, awesome. Thanks, everybody.
Welcome back. I could unmute myself, couldn't I? Mm. Um, in case anyone was concerned about my computer, here's we the situation. Are. There's good news. Okay. Oh, yay. Um, I had been dealing. I'm, I have a new um, computer coming soon. I hope because I've been having keyboard issues, and I lost my R and my T key recently. So I've been using an external keyboard, but now my T key like pushes down um, and holds down even on like the internal keyboard. And so what happened when I restarted my computer is that apparently on a Mac, if you're holding down the T key on a restart, it enters this weird mode that um, now, so my computer's not dead. I just had to figure out how to get out of this recovery mode. <laughs> so yeah, I think you have to find a MacBook expert who you can hand it to and say, do something with this, please, thank you. Well, thankfully one of my board members works for Apple. So what? talk about, having the right people in the right places. Awesome. <laughs> we love it when board members come through. That is great. Anyway, just wanted to share that little, little Thank story. you. I was I was holding myself back actually from checking in to add to your stress. So I'm really <laughs> glad you volunteered that. <laughs> All right. What do you think, um, panel chairman? Shall we start up again? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, we are, welcome back. We are now at the um, Multidisciplinary Arts Organization's mid-sized uh, budget organizations that, uh, that pay their artists. And we are uh, going to La Crosse, where uh, uh, Pump House Regional Art Center's application awaits. And Carrie, that is you. That is me. The Pump House Regional Arts Center is as it states in its name, a regional arts center um, in La Crosse. It is in a historic structure um, from 1880. And, it, and that historic structure, uh, which was uh, public works, um, it has three art galleries, a theater, a pottery studio, meeting areas, and classrooms. Um, so it's a wonderful historic structure, which has caused some uh, issues for the organization as far as just building problems because historic structures do that sort of thing. The mission of the Pump House Regional Arts Center is to enhance the quality of life in the region um, by maintaining the Pump House, the, the structure, as a cultural center and offering all those programs that I just mentioned. Um, it reaches 4,700 adults in the course of a year and 400 youth. Um, and the comments I have within the application is that it does, um, as all the items I listed, has a wide variety of artistic programming, everything from educational folk arts workshops to performances to an arts festival. And their 2020 planning, um, a lot of it didn't happen, but it does show um, that it was trying new things. And so it was, it was poised to um, try new initiatives and they were able to adapt some of those and what i particularly liked it's a small thing but it, it's notable because it's they had the capacity to do this is that they have a marquee and on their marquee they used it to uh, communicate to the community hope um, and you know that arts inspire and so also those kind of messages are important and i like that they were able to share it and, it and that they did it um so they do partner with um, lots of organizations. They're in a community that has um, higher ed, so they can have interns and they have help with technology and facility support from the city. Um, their programming does reflect um, both uh, the range of ages and the racial diversity of the community. They're very active in publicly advocating for the arts, and so they use the facility to host um, listening sessions um, for that area of the state. Its primary barrier is, is the building, and that is kind of woven throughout um, the narrative about the, the issues and financial challenges that the, and the just basic structural challenges that the building pose, poses for the organization. Um, they do use public listening sessions in their planning process. 
Um, I would have liked to have seen or know more about what planning they're doing. Um, is this artistic planning? Is this um, organizational wide strategic planning? Um, looking at specifically the building. So including that within the narrative um, would have helped clarify things. And a little bit more clarity on who develops the program schedule and generates the ideas and pursue the partnerships. It does have an organizational plan, but it doesn't really have a, a strategic plan it's working off. And that's mm -hmm. my good All righty. Lindsay. Yeah, um, so I know that the the panel, we're, we're all from different backgrounds, which is the beauty of it. And so um, my background is working for an organization of a similar budget size. And so I, I don't know. So I'm just, I guess I'm saying um, what I bring to the table is uh, I'm just blown away by um, what an organization with this budget is accomplishing. Um, and I was very impressed with their shift to with how they handled COVID. Um, I thought that their construction <laughs> that they do every year, but then they you know made it a smaller kind of thing this year. Uh, I think that that's such a, a cute idea uh, in giving back to the to the community. I think it goes to the food pantry. Um, but they maintained their exhibits and they did take home art projects and. Um, virtual gallery talks and live streams. And I just, I thought that they had some innovative ideas during COVID. Um, lots of great partnerships, uh, like Harry mentioned, um, having three higher education facilities there. Um, it's a great, great collaborations can happen there. Um, it sounds like they are uh, making efforts to broaden their participation and reduce barriers. Uh, intentional about their programming to highlight their diverse population. Um, they, they gave good examples of how they, how they are using their feedback um, to make changes. Uh, they, they mentioned that some of their local artists are feeling a little bit slighted uh, because they've, their reputation has grown over the years and they're artists from all over that the local artists wanted some attention again. And so they heard that and um, have taken some actions to help with that. And um, good SWOT analysis. Let's see. I think, uh, I think Carrie got most of the other. Oh, and the, then um, I also wanted to highlight their, their walking together event that included attendance by local leaders. I think it's great that they are, they're getting those individuals involved in their programming. Thank you. All right, other comments? I liked hearing how they serve um, the nine school districts, um, really geared with helping the rural, school, rural schools and adapting their time and open schedules um, to accommodate with that and into their space. Um, I also liked reading about the placemaking project with the mural depicting the community's diversity. I think that really helped um, kind of just provide more discussions and reflections. I think there are partnerships within the, the university and then the um, um, rest of the community from school districts through the, the workforce connections and development and food pantries are just um, really innovative and they really look at how they can use the arts to try to solve community problems. So kudos to them for that. Um, and certainly the pandemic has made up, caused them to scale back a little bit, but they haven't closed and um, doesn't look like it's uh, slowed them down a whole lot uh, from doing what they they see important. Um, their use of the talk back events looks like they're, they're uh, attempting to be very responsive to the community and use that feedback uh, in um, a, a progressive manner um, and, and continue to just grow a loyal audience, but uh, creative things. I, I loved the construction idea too and, and the give back to the uh, food pantries, especially during this time. So yeah, pretty cool. 
staying on the food subject, apparently that's an obsession of mine this week, uh, today. Uh, the carry-out dine-in gallery rental program uh, seems to me to be a, a, an ingenious way of, uh, of keeping social distance. Okay, you can't be in the gallery with anybody else. Fine. Rent the whole thing. Bring your own dinner. Um, it's... Uh, it's a fascinating notion, and I'm, I'm wondering about how, how successful that's been. Um, I also feel for them with regard to the irony of their capital project to upgrade their theater space uh, from <laughs> decrepit to, uh, to really, uh, really complementary to the work that's going on the stage. Uh, it's finally uh, being now that they can't use it. So, uh, but embrace the irony. Uh, it's 